Hi, my name's Dan Bean, and welcome to For the Rest of My Life. I'm a 54-year-old single dad, clearly overweight, and I'm gonna do something about it. And I'm gonna bring you along on this incredible, life-changing journey with me. I wanna get it over with at this point. I mean, I wanna move on. I wanna, I wanna feel what I'm supposed to feel like. It's daunting, but it's also incredibly exciting. Dan's surgery went just great, no problems. So his band's in good position and it'll heal up over the next few weeks and then he's off and running. It's only been a few hours. I'm already on my way home. It's amazing. There have been the nicest people in the world and we're about to start the rest of my life, so. There are people who say, hey, you know, you know, you're really cheating. Mm -hmm. And I it's say, the easy way out. Perhaps. Exactly. And I say, you know what? This is just a tool. I still have to stop eating when I feel full. Right. I still have to stop. Right. It doesn't stop you. We find that people really have to pay attention to their eating in a way that they're not used to. One of the things that I attribute to my own success with this is that I'm absolutely driven to have food that I like because I don't get very much, so it darn well better be good. You need to slow down. You need to cut things into smaller pieces and chew well, and in many ways, slow down and enjoy the experience. It's a new way of, of eating, and after a while, it's just the ordinary way. This is just the way it is. I'm kind of an emotional eater, and uh, you know, stress caused me, or I allowed stress to really make me or allow me to gain weight and to eat the wrong way and so I um, I had to do something. Oftentimes people are using food to anesthetize themselves and when you can no longer eat there is this sense like goodness now what am I going to do with myself? And I know that there are a lot of people just like me who are afraid and it, it, and they're afraid to do anything about it. You get, you get to a point where you're almost paralyzed People are also sometimes afraid of success because when you lose weight, um, they're afraid they're gonna become a different person. Banding doesn't really change your basic personality. It just helps you be a thinner person. Then we really encourage people to come to support group every month. I'm Robin and I've lost 200 pounds. I was banded in 2005. I am Lee and I have been banded nearly two years and I have lost 225 pounds. I'm Dan. I was banded in December of 08 and I've lost 38 pounds. And that's where we talk over a lot of the emotional issues and uh, the changes that are happening. So our discussion in the main part of our support group tonight was on self-esteem. Anybody want to share what you're currently dealing with around your how you perceive yourself? Well I can start off um, I'm Monica, and I've lost a little, maybe about 45 pounds in the last year. I was banded last uh, February, and um, I had a lot of insecurities about my appearance and um, clothes and these types of things. And now that I've lost some weight, I'm going out and buying new clothes, but I'm still buying clothes that are too big. I get home and I try them on, and it's not right. So I'm just adjusting with. Um, a different vision of myself, but I'm also dealing with putting clothes on and feeling pretty good about myself. I think that's my biggest issue right now, is just trying to grapple with the older me and the newer me. Unfortunately, in this society, people are judged by how they look, and there's nothing I can do about that. I can't change the way people think when they see that I'm overweight, but I can change my weight. One of the things I've been struggling with for my whole life is, basically just eating too much. And so we're gonna work here today with my cousin Chrissy, who is a certified nutritionist, and she's going to help me make some of my comfort foods and some of the things that I crave, maybe a little bit, a little healthier and uh, easy to make and fun. And still taste good. And still taste good too, yes. thank you. Yes. So first thing we're gonna make is what? We are gonna make chocolate chip meringues. So this replaces my craving for chocolate chip cookies. Yes, yes, it has all the goodness of a chocolate chip cookie, but without the calories. <sighs> I'm so happy, yes, let's go. Yes. So all how right. do we start? So first you start with three egg whites. You wanna make sure the eggs are at room temperature because the um, whites will froth better. A fourth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Let it go for about six minutes. 
That looks good. It's at a soft peak. And then we'll slowly add the sugar. But we're making so many cookies that it doesn't yes. really matter. Yes, so there's only two thirds a cup of sugar in the whole entire recipe. If you wanted to trim it down even more, you could use Splenda. And we'll do this until um, stiff peaks form. How many calories will be in a, each one of these? About 15 calories in each one. Fif that's all? One five? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And with the pretty... chocolate chips and with sugar in this? Yes, yeah. And they're pretty small Love too, this. you know, compared to a chocolate chip cookie. Um, they're pretty small. So now we'll turn that up. And um, actually, I'm going to add the vanilla, a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. Okay, and that looks good. See, so their stiff peaks have formed. So when we lift up the mixer, oh, we take off I the see. paddle, they don't fall down. So now we are going to fold in the cocoa powder. Okay, now we're going to do oh, the same thing with fancy. the chocolate chips. Mm. We just fold them in. And it's dark chocolate too, so it has mm. the antioxidants. So it's Got it's your healthy health too. benefits too, better <laughs> than milk chocolate. And now we are going to pipe it, um, put it all into a bag and pipe it onto the baking sheet. If you don't have a pastry bag, you can just use a Ziploc bag, which is what we're going to use. All right, so you just lift it up. So how Very many, so how many cookies will this make? Um, this will make about three dozen cookies. And you're just going to cut a hole in the corner of the bag. And you can actually do any design you want to. If it was Valentine's Day, you could do little hearts or um, you can make little um, bowls, so you could put some, you know, cream or berries in um, the middle of them. They'll stay where you put them and in the shape you put them. What makes regular chocolate chip cookies so much more fattening than compared to what we're doing? Well, if you really look at the ingredients of chocolate, regular chocolate chip cookies, you have the flour, you have oil, you have butter. Oh, butter. Um, what brown was I thinking? sugar, regular sugar. So it's just the simplicity of the meringues that really keeps their calorie count down. So now we'll put them in the oven. Um, at 200 degrees, you bake them for 90 minutes because- Well, wait a minute, why 90 minutes for such a well, low temp? Because um, the low temperature and a longer amount of times, it makes a better meringue, a better texture. Now, if you wanted to speed it up, you could do it for 350 degrees for 25 minutes, but the texture doesn't come out as great. So if uh -huh. you're really anxious, you can do that, but otherwise, if you have the time, 200 degrees for 90 minutes. Good to know. Yep. I didn't know that. All right, let's put them in. You want to open the oven for sure. me? Sure. All right, and here's the finished product. You got to try one out. Okay, I can't wait. Mmm, so good. Oh, those are great. Mm-hmm. Chrissy, well done. You know, I, I don't miss my chocolate chip cookies anymore. And, and I think I even can make this, so I'm really excited. And if you have a comfort food that you want to make healthy, Write to Chrissy or me. Chrissy is at K-R-I-S-S-I-E at IncredibleShrinkingDan.com. And you know what? Maybe we'll make your favorite dish in one of our next episodes.